Hello, and thank you for joining us, joining us again today on Painting with Tracy. So today we're going to be doing things a little bit different. We're going to be actually doing a watercolor today. Uh, we're going to be doing a tropical beach scene because it's still a little cold outside and I just feel like warming up. I'm going to be using a Strathmore 140 pound watercolor block today. I like to go with 140 pounds because your paper is it's a little bit stiffer. It'll stand up to the water uh, a lot better than say a 90 pound will. Um, I do believe we're working with a, it's an 11 by 15 today. And uh, we're just gonna get right into it. So to get things started, we're gonna go ahead and, and just start wetting our canvas. And because we're gonna be doing an all over background color that we wanna have somewhat of a gradient blend on, we're just gonna go ahead and wet our entire paper down. Now, when you're wetting your paper down, it's, you're gonna do it very similar to the way you would do a canvas when you're wetting your gesso that's, it comes pre-gessoed. And we're just gonna get a nice sheen over the whole paper. We definitely don't want to have any puddles of water anywhere, but you want, you want like I said, a nice, a nice sheen. And then once you feel like you've got your, can your paper sufficiently wet enough, oh, dog hair again, bless my puppies. <laughs> Once you feel like you've got your paper sufficiently wet enough, then you're going to take a second and look at it and decide where you want your horizon line to be today. So for me, I'm going to put my horizon line just, uh, I'm going to say, a little bit above a third of the way up from the bottom. Make one more nice extra sweep across there with the water. Then I'm going to wet my brush again, wipe it off on both sides, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up some medium yellow. Take, we're just going to drop that in right there, right along our horizon. Now at this point we're not worried too much about the transition between our sunset in the sky and the, the blue-green of the ocean that we're going to put in there because we're going to be putting in a black border. We're going to be shadow boxing our island and our palm trees today. Grab a little bit more of this yellow and bring it up, especially in the middle here. rinse this off in this cup over here. So it's a good idea when you're doing watercolors to have two water cups. You're gonna want one for rinsing and then one for fresh water. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna pick up some of this, this orange that I've got going on. I do believe it's an alizarian orange. We're just gonna put that right over the top of where our yellow is. Try not to go too much into the middle. Pick up some more of this orange. Right across. Not really worrying about it being perfectly blended. So the great thing about watercolor is it's it's kind of got a mind of its own. It's it's water. You can definitely suggest where you would like it to go, but it's it's really going to kind of do whatever it wants. For those of us that can get a little bit, oh, shall we say, controlling and and in the rest of our lives. It's, I find that watercolor is, is an amazing stress reliever because you kind of just have to learn to relax and let the water go where it wants to. So now that we've got our orange on there, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up some magenta and drop that in right on top and let that kind of blend with the orange below. There you go. If it feels like your paper is starting to dry out on you, then go ahead and rinse your brush. Wipe it off really, really good. And come over here and pick up some of your clean water and just come down from the top. Go ahead and bring that down even into the red. We're gonna put a little bit more of that clean water There we go. And this time just follow it all the way down to the bottom. Go ahead and let the... All right, and so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna pick up a little bit more of this dioxazine purple that we've got. We're just gonna start dropping it in right here. Now, with your watercolor, 
If you feel like you're not getting the pigment to transfer to your paper like you want it to, then the secret is actually more water. A lot of people think it's more paint, more color, but it's, it's really not. So once we get that purple in there, we're gonna rinse off our brush just a little bit. Come over here and pick up some of this nice dark indigo. Run that across the top. There we go, blend that into this purple that we have underneath it here. Maybe a little bit more of the indigo. And then because we're kind of working on a gradient blend in the background today, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to squeeze the extra indigo out of my brush rather than rinsing it. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to go straight back into this magenta. Drop that in right below. See how well that blends. There we go. Bring it up just a little bit. There we go, a little bit more of this magenta over here. Blending upward. So I mentioned earlier I'm using a watercolor block today. I like using the blocks because they come, um, they come glued basically all, on all four sides. It's gonna come with just a tiny little slit in either the top or the bottom that you can slide the, the end of your brush under when you're all done with your, your project. And it helps with, uh, with buckling basically is, is the best use I've found for it. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with doing that and you, you wanna just go with a straight paper, uh, I do recommend taping the corners of it down or even the sides, the whole sides. Unless you know how to pre-stretch your papers, I'm not very good at it. So, all right. So we're gonna pick up a little bit more of this yellow over here. Should we get a lot of pigment on that one because it's the lightest color that we're using? Tilt this just a hair. Does everybody see that? Okay, still. All right. I'm just gonna go ahead and come up on our edge and drop in a bunch of this yellow right here. And that all the way across, all the way across, and then just kind of blend that little sharp line that you end up with right there. It's all right if you bring your orange down into it. It's a it's a tropical sunset. All right, feeling pretty good about the blend that we've got going on. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, and while that's drying up top. We're just gonna come over here and we're gonna grab that blue green that we're gonna use for our ocean. Pick that up and just come up from the bottom. And it's all right if the bottom is, is a little dry. We'll be using a couple of different techniques today with that. With the top, it was definitely a wet on wet. Uh, with the bottom, we're gonna go with wet on dry. And each serve their purpose. The, the wet on wet is much better technique for a gradient blend for a more smoother transition. The, the wet on dry makes for a sharper line, I believe. But it's all about your own personal technique also, your own personal preference. I feel like the color goes on a lot smoother in a wet on wet. little bit more of this here and we'll be just about ready to let the whole background dry and then once that happens we'll come in with our with our black and our our paints gray and just finish up the island and get some palm trees laid in there all right just a little bit more on our edge there to sharpen up that line not super detrimental because your island's going to go right over the top of it. Go. Beautiful. Smooth 
that out just a little bit. There we go. And there you have it, folks. We're just going to give this a couple of minutes to dry, and then we'll start moving forward with the with the final parts of our, our painting today. All right, now that we've given our paper a sufficient amount of time to dry, we're gonna come back through and we're gonna put a couple of the highlights in the, in the body of the ocean that we have down here, and then we're gonna also finish it off with our black silhouettes. So I'm gonna reach over, I've switched to a, a smaller flat brush, just because I like being up on the, that angled edge. You can always use an angle brush, you can use a round, I'm gonna pick up some clean water with it though, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of this blue-green right here. Just a little bit. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a couple of strokes, just side to side like so. And that's gonna give you a little bit of definition in your ocean, suggesting waves and basically just movement of water. A little bit more of this blue-green. Not a lot. And you don't even need to do the whole thing because a lot of this is going to be covered with that island silhouette. Just light, soft little strokes. Also throw a little lifting in here as well. Dip our brush in the clean water. Wipe it off pretty good. And just come back with just a, a watered brush. It's a technique, like I said, they call it lifting. I prefer to think of it more as moving because you're not really lifting the color up so much as you're just moving it from one spot to another. There we go. So I'm gonna call that good for our little cove. And I'm just gonna come over here, pick up some of this dirtier water because it's just fine because we're going straight into black. Pick up a fair amount of the color. And then, again, we're gonna be up on our very edge. We're just gonna cover this horizon line right here. Definitely does not have to be perfectly straight, but you do want it to cover that whole transition. So I was telling you earlier that we didn't really need to worry about it being perfect. Now I am using an an ivory black today. You can use a lamp black if you'd like. Uh, there's so many different shades of black. It's crazy. There we go, let's get that all in there. A little bit more. We're gonna bring that around so that this becomes a cove for us. Kind of play with your line a little bit because you, you want it to look natural. You don't want everything to be super smooth. And I'm gonna bring that just right around there. Now I am feeling like my black is not near as pigmented as I would like it to. So I'm going to reach over. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of this ivory black. Add it right there in my tray next to the if that it's already been watered. And then we're gonna do what they call painting from the tube. Um, just gonna wet our brush down again, pick up some of that straight out of the tube black, blend it with a little bit of the water, but it's gonna be a really thick, heavy pigment on it. Just drop that onto there. And at this point, we're just filling in our silhouette. So nothing has to be perfect. A little bit more. Dropping that in there. At this point, if you'd like, you can switch to a bigger brush for a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, save ourselves a little bit of time. Wet our brush down again. And just pick up some of that, like I said, that straight from the tube black. A little bit of the of stuff you already have mixed up. So right now we're doing a, a wet on dry because we didn't pre-wet our paper before we started putting this on. Go ahead and twist this just a hair so you can see better. A 
Hmm. I'm wondering if I'm using the right black for this today. Just continue filling this in with the black. Hmm. So we're gonna try something. Like I said, we started with the, the ivory black. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that lamp black actually and mix that in right over the top of this and see what that does for us. See if we can get a, a better coverage. So, pick up some of that lamp black. Mm. Mix that right in there. We're gonna mix it really thick though, because we want to make sure we get a nice coverage that way we're not seeing the, the ocean that we already put in behind it. Oh yeah, that's so much better. There we go. Beautiful. Just bring that all the way down to the bottom. Yeah. Now you're seeing some brush strokes in it right now, and that's fine. It's, uh, it's going to dry similar to the acrylics, and when it's all said and done, you're really not going to see much of them. If you're still feeling like you're not getting that nice dark coverage like you're wanting, then let your paper dry and add another coat. Twist this just a hair. Get in here. Oh, so much better. That makes me so much happier. So we are gonna give this just another minute or two to dry on its own. That way we're not dragging our hand through it while we're putting in our palm trees. And you know, and then while we're letting it dry, we're gonna be thinking about what other kinds of accents do we wanna put in it? Do we wanna put some sandcastles down there in the bottom? Do you wanna put some shadows of maybe some, some ocean otters down there? You, now's, now's a good time to think about that. Give it a little twist, take a second to look at it. And yeah, we're gonna give it about a minute and a half or two to dry and then we're gonna come back and finish her up. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start putting in our palm trees now. I'm gonna take even smaller flat brush. Pick up a little bit more of that lamp black this time. Now just pick a spot and start drawing, drawing in tree, tree trunks. Up on the very edge, try to keep it as nice and smooth as you can. Bring it back down. I think I might have gone too small with my brush. I'm gonna bump it up to this one again. Here we go. Pick up a little bit more of this lamp black. Go ahead and load your brush up with it like you would if we were doing an acrylic. And then just go ahead and let your hand actually drag across your paper. It's not gonna hurt anything. There we go. Smooth that one out right there. And at this point, this is where you can fix any blurbs or any, shall we say, bald or light colored spots in your paper. Seems like I've got a little bit of a swipe here with the black. First of all, make sure we don't have anything that we're dragging across our canvas. And then we're gonna bring in one more tree here. Fill that right, see how that just disappears like that. Bring another one, bring it over right here. There we go. And then I think I've decided that we're going to go ahead and put a little sandcastle in over here. So, go ahead and turn your brush the flat way. There we go, bring that down. Pick up just a little bit more color. Just going to kind of make it like a birthday cake. Just 
couple of t layers, nice little tower. There we go. I'm gonna put a tiny little hat on top of this guy. Once you have your basic shape in there, just kind of play with it. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and give him a little, little tower right there. And I think before we're done, I'll come back and give him a little ribbon off the top of his flagpole. I'm going to put, mm, let's go ahead and throw in two more of these palm trees right over here. And we're going to start these guys right here. Drag that one up to about so. Pick up a little bit more of that black. Drag another one up in there too. All right. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and switch to our fan brush to get our palm leaves in there. Don't forget to rinse your brush really good in between uses. I'm gonna pick up that fan brush. We're gonna actually go back into our clean water for this one. Back and pick up that lamp black again. Now it's not a bad idea to practice this stroke on on another surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slide that down just a hair so we can see. And to do our palm leaf, we're going to be up on our edge like so. And you're just going to drop it in, just going to dab it in like so. Feel pretty good about that. Come back to the paper, pick a little bit more water. And let's start with this guy right here. As you can see, we're just kind of curving it around. Feel free to pick up your paper if you need to at this point to or twist it. I like to twist mine around. I hope that that's, hope that's working for everybody else and you, you can all see what I got going on here. This one this direction. And a little bit more of a twist. There we go. Do that guy right there. And since we already have it at this angle, let's go ahead and get a couple more while we're here. to play around with your palm tree leaves. I don't think that you can necessarily have too many fronds or, or leaves or however you want to call it on any one tree because it's not a super large leaf. It's not it's not real dense. It's not going to create a large canopy that's be difficult to see through. You can also give the impression of the direction the wind blows with your palm leaves if you like. See, the wind comes from the right over here a lot more often than it does from, from the left. And so you'd have the majority of your palm leaves go in that direction. But since this is my tropical paradise today, we're going to make it a wind-free day. Let those palm trees just kind of fall wherever they may. Keep in mind that we did put our sand castle in and try not to do what I just did and stick your hand in it. A little bit more of a twist. If you do stick your hand in it, just try to keep up off your hand. <laughs> there we go, pick up a little bit more. A little twist. There we go. A little bit more. Now, I find it, it's not as easy for me to go one direction as it is the other. Not 
sure why. I blame my dad, though. <laughs> he swears up and down that I was born a lefty. Mom swears up and down I was born a righty. But, so I, they tried to make me ambidextrous for a little while, and I thought that I could do it, but it turns out I can't. <laughs> but I can't help but try. And then we've got this last little palm tree over here that we're going to do our fronds on. Or leaves, excuse me. Thinking about ferns again. Pop some of that guy in. A little bit more. A little bit more and just a hair more there. All right. Beautiful. Now, if I'm going to call it right here, but I'd love for you to keep playing with it if you'd like. Go ahead and make your leaves bigger or smaller. Um, add in a couple of little tiny coconuts if you think that that's something that you might enjoy on your island. Feel free to add in extra accents to your ocean down here below as well. That's right, we're going to do that ribbon at the top of our flagpole. Pick that up with a little bit of round right there. We're just going to let that guy just float off into nowhere. But not very far, because like I said, it's a wind-free day in my paradise. All right, folks. When everything's said and done and it's all dried up for you, go ahead and sign the bottom of it. Since we did a black, I'd recommend doing a white gouache, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It'll go over the top of it really nicely, and your name will stand out like it should. Thanks again for joining us today. Have a great one.